Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I plan to test what would happen if we put an expendable hydrogen upper stage on top of Super Heavy. Previously I had tried out a hydrogen-fueled starship and that's not very good because if you replace methane and oxygen with hydrogen and oxygen in the same volume then you get less performance in terms of delta V, in terms of change of velocity. So we don't want to do that and instead I mean it does have the benefit of making things lighter for super heavy however we don't really want things to be lighter for super heavy which is the lower stage here and uh, because making things lighter for super heavy just means it gets further away from the launch site which means it's difficult for it to get back so actually we want to keep the burden on super heavy basically the same or even make it heavier because then it'll just be easier for super heavy to come back so here we have a Super Heavy that has uh, nominal Raptor 2-ish engines at the bottom and 33 of them. You can see them there. And uh, on top, so we don't want the same volume for the hydrogen tank. Therefore, I have a larger volume. So instead of filling up a Starship with hydrogen, uh, hydrogen and oxygen, we have a completely different tank and it's a, an ex expendable stage. And I went with 12 meters, and that's because the original ITS system, the Interplanetary Transport System, was 12 meters. And I think SpaceX is still thinking of doing something like that, so uh, I went with 12 meters for that reason. Maybe they would later use this tank for that purpose. And, uh, but, you know, with peculiarities because it's hydrogen. And I have gone with Raptors converted to hydrogen. And so what we have here, because Hydrogen is less dense and the uh, exhaust products are less dense. It gets less thrust and I calculate this out. So it's a uh, 1,600 kilonewtons only each. And we get 351 sea level. Uh, it doesn't have flow separation at sea level, just like the regular Raptor. I went with uh, 300 atmospheres or 300 bar, whatever you want to go with. Uh, about 4,400 PSI chamber pressure and we have a 448.9 second ISP vacuum. So that is basically the same as the J2X. So same department. Um, this is all very conservative, I would consider. So you can take it as it is. I, I prefer going with conservative numbers rather than going with overly optimistic numbers. A thing that I wish more people would do <laughs> but anyway uh, our payload is about 200 tons and that is what we're aiming for and we will just launch it and see if it can manage that 200 tons we will reserve fuel in super heavy for its return and this is meant to be an expendable upper stage that I may put to other uses so we will see so hydrogen heavy and uh, there's seven Raptor engines there, and you saw they were all vacuums, so we'll need some gimbling out of them. Uh, it just wasn't a good idea to put sea level engines if it's not going to land. So, all right, here we go. Frankly, even if it was going to land, the fact that the hydrogen engines get such decent ISP at sea level means that we would probably just want to use them. Okay, here we go. Throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. And launch. So basically the upper stage has been sized to as big as I could make it without overburdening Super Heavy. So we will go a bit steeper than normal because we need enough time to do the burn with the upper stage with the seven engines. We could have put nine engines and that would have made it a bit easier but we'll just go steeper. I like this texture. This is one of the old textures for the procedural tanks. It's a nifty one and also it's sort of the right ratio if you've got an oxygen tank on top and a hydrogen tank on the bottom. So it's handy for that. Okay, so I'm going to wait for a stage time remaining of about 15 seconds and that's what we'll reserve in the Super Heavy. That's about 10% of its remaining fuel. Should be plenty. We are launching out of Boca Chica here. Okay, and shut down. Alright, separation. 
we do have to sort of dump these furring pieces. There may be a way to configure it so that we can put keep those fairings on this stage. But I think that might have to be a custom piece. Uh, we might want the inner stage to be reversed and placed on this side instead of the other side. Maybe that would work out better. Okay, fairing set. Again, just a 200 ton tank here with a little control unit. And it's an eight minute stage. So we will have to keep pointing up for a little bit. Overall arrangement is sort of like a Saturn 1B style thing. Well, I guess a Saturn 1 considering we have so many engines. Uh, one extra actually. But burn time wise it's more like the Saturn 1B. About two and a half minutes on the first stage and eight minutes on the second stage. The tank, by the way, is a very standard procedural tank. Default values for an integral structure tank. So I would expect that it is much heavier than what SpaceX would try to do. Okay, we are passing Miami here. And just about getting into orbit. And shut down, 238 by 214 with 371 meters per second left, so that's with a 200 ton payload. We'll call this the baseline. Uh, we can uh, see what a more optimistic arrangement might do for us. Let's try that out. So we we're actually using aluminum lithium, so that is a bit, a bit less than the absolute default. The absolute default would be not high pressure. Um, 139.5 tons and then aluminum lithium 113.3 tons there's the composite option 108.3 tons and then there's the magic which is your normal SpaceX option 82.82 uh, tons we'll go with composite let's see they, they had wanted to do a composite tank for for a start well the ITS system but I get the strange feeling that that did not work out and that would especially not work out very well for hydrogen <laughs> because composites are not happy at really cold temperatures but we're just going with the mass we're not actually saying that it would be a composite structure we're just going well what is this mass dry mass percentage here it's not even the most optimistic I've ever seen the space shuttle external tank is probably the best this is about 7.5%, 7.5% dry. So, yeah, eh, I've seen even better than that, but it's still pretty good. Uh, so then we'll also increase the payload capacity. Since we did have some left in orbit. I think I'm willing to try 230. Again, still reserving fuel in Super Heavy for its return. Okay, so here we go again. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. It's an interesting looking rocket. And during a live stream, when I used it to try and launch the Maru Q over to the moon, uh, not the exact same arrangement, a somewhat different arrangement. Uh, JM Studios said that it looked like a Delta 3 in the making, and that led to something else which deserves its own video. We will not um, contaminate this video with that particular rocket. Okay, getting ready for staging. And shut down, staging, ignition. Oh, wrong thing, wrong thing. Oops. <laughs> these. I wanted these. Um, I wanted to see how much Delta V we actually have in the stage here. 3,200. Uh, that might be cutting a little bit close. Oh, it is 8 minutes. I don't know. In the VAB, I don't know what kind of staging I have. Um, 
Uh, it's a little bit messed up, but uh, yeah, in the VAB it says six minutes. Out, out here it says eight minutes. So I think it's eight minutes. <laughs> it's, uh, it was lying to me in the VAB. I don't know why. Probably the staging. Okay, well, as we are approaching Florida, this one's looking like a little bit too much for it. Continue to see here that it's very tight here. Okay, well, just barely made it. Uh, 238 by 149, maybe 150. Yeah, just barely made it. So 230 tons, definitely all I'm going to do with it. Uh, so yeah, interesting thing, but just uh, just a novelty act, if you will. Uh, we will see. Maybe there's something to do with it. It could expedite a few things uh, if we're going to transfer them to higher orbits and all that. So I'll have to think about that. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.